The Dungeons and Lasers campaigns have been the go-to event for folks wanting loads of high quality but affordable terrain and minis. The trade-off was that it all arrived on sprues and unpainted. So to truly get it table ready, you had to go through some prep work. But if your gaming budget was limited, they were probably the best terrain you could get for the price. But this new campaign, Dungeons and Lasers Caves, has a few welcome twists. We still get loads of great terrain and minis on sprues, but this time they actually have pre-painted options. Yes, I could not be more happy about this innovation. So in today's paid Kickstarter preview, I'm gonna go over all the sets, all the themes, all the sub-themes, which are basically like special rooms, and the add-ons, which include thematic mini collections, pre-painted versions of legacy sets, a new hardcover supplement, and more. So, get your light spell ready as we venture into Dungeons & Lasers Caves. As we go through this, it's important to understand how this campaign is organized and how the pledges work. With your pledge, you'll get a certain number of core sets and a certain number of sub-themes, plus the stretch goals. You'll also choose whether you want your sets unpainted or pre-painted. If you choose painted, all the core sets and the sub-themes will arrive painted, but the stretch goals all come unpainted for everyone. Two things before we start. If you want to check out the campaign at any time, we have the link in the eye in the corner of your screen up there or in the doohickey down below. Using our link lets them know we sent you and helps keep us on the air. Also, be aware that sometimes changes occur between the time we make our video and the time the campaign launches, so check out the actual campaign page thoroughly before you make your pledge. The main default core set is the Rocky Caves, and we're gonna start there. I do have a few samples I can show you. This is a frame of Rocky Caves pre-painted terrain that you'll get out of the box compared to the unpainted Rocky Caves. This is how it's going to arrive before you do any work on it. After using some sprue cutters to get it off the frame, you're gonna have this. The various pieces fit together with little connectors like this. This will ensure that the pieces will stick together if you move them gently around your table. These connectors are the same ones that Dungeons & Lasers has always used, making these new sets completely compatible with the older sets if you want to mix and match terrain, moving from a building to a secret underground cavern, for example. Here's a closer look at the full Rocky Caves core set and what you can build with the core set. You get 15 sprues, which contain 92 total elements, including some curved walls, hills, floors, corners, props, and more. You can see everything here. Our next core set is the Demonic Caves. This set has skulls and bones and weird demonic artifacts all over the place. Perfect for the well-lived-in dungeon with some heavy metal vibes. It includes 15 sprues and 104 elements, including a bridge. Here you can see the contents of the Demonic Caves core set. Here is a little preview image of what it looks like pre-painted. The last core set is the Belly of the Beast, perfect for Far Realm dark tapestry style adventures. This set also includes some hills and bridges. You can see the full contents of it right here, 15 sprues, 98 elements. And while I don't have any sample pieces from this core set, here's a picture of what the pre-painted version should look like. Now let's dive into the sub-themes, and really just think about these as separate specialty rooms. These can be used in conjunction with your caves, with our other Dungeons & Lasers sets like these, or just on their own. When you're pledging, all these sets cost an equal amount. Different pledge tiers will let you choose a certain number of sub-themes. You can also just add on more individually if you like. Each set has five sprues worth of elements. First off, we have the Goblin Layer and Already, this might be my favorite one in the set. 44 elements here, including walls, big tent pieces, and lots of props to make it thematic. Next up is the spider nest. You can tuck this room right into your cave builds for those sections of the cavern that have been taken over by a giant spider and her brood. This set has 28 webby elements, lots of walls and floors here, giving you a lot of room for an encounter. Every dungeon has a room like this. Next up is the Deep Mine, an area deep underground where someone originally had a mining operation going on, but it was abandoned in a hurry. There are still some gems and crystals and precious metals down there. 28 elements in this set. This is a good set to bridge between the caves and the Dwarven Mine legacy set that we're going to talk about later. This is the Combat Arena, which is definitely a top tier set. It has quite the unique design with stairs and platforms. This is one that you can use in a negative space build with a battle mat. Maybe the arena is over lava or running water or just a deep abyss. Just depends on how you wanna set it up on your table. It includes 32 elements, including a lot of floors. 
And next up is the ritual site, which looks like a cave room with glyphs or runes carved into the walls and floors and a raised altar just begging for a sacrifice. This is a great one for a boss encounter and it has 28 elements. Next up, we have the Chambers of Agony. It's a similar design with a single large room with a raised altar in the center. This one has handmade walls instead of the cave walls. It also has four cages and four unfortunate occupants. 36 elements altogether here. The next three sets are natural fits for the Belly of the Beast core set. This is the Maw of Abyss. Lots of fleshy and toothy Far Realm madness going on here, all centered around a cavity I'm pretty sure you're gonna want to avoid. This one is all walls and floors for 28 elements. Here is the Evil Eye Hive, another fleshy room with weird eyeballs and gross mounds of flesh growing in the center. What could be under that mound of flesh? I bet it's not kittens. The Evil Eye Hive has a total of 28 elements. And finally, we have the Carnage Track, which is quite the unique one that is still a work in progress as of the recording of this video. This appears to be a long, fleshy corridor, long enough for an encounter, but also potentially great for linking up the previous two sets. It has 32 elements. Now that is the heart of the campaign. In your pledge, you're gonna select a certain number of core sets, a certain number of sub-themes, and you'll get the stretch goals with all of them. Let's go through a few examples. The Surveyor Pledge gets you one core set. It'll run you $99 unpainted or $139 painted. And of course, you pick which core set. The Stretch Pay thing that you see there is a way to pay in overtime and installments. The Minor Pledge gets you a core set and three sub-themes for $149 unpainted or $229 painted. The Prospector Pledge nets you two core sets and three sub-themes for $195 unpainted, $319 painted. And remember, if you do want to double up on sets, you can. So if you just want two Rocky Cave sets to build a big natural cave, you can certainly choose to do that. The Dwarven Sapper gets you three core sets and three sub-themes. That's 229 unpainted, 399 painted. Now we are getting into pretty sizable dungeons if you build it all at once. I don't even think this would fit on my gaming table here. But let's assume that you have a big table. The Dwarven Warrior Pledge gets you two core sets and six sub-themes for 249 unpainted or 415 painted. Finally, if you like one of everything or a mix and match, you can get the King of the Mountain Pledge for three core sets and nine sub-themes, and that'll run you 319 unpainted and 559 painted. Here is a helpful little summary of all the available options. You should be able to find something in there to match your budget and needs. If you've ever backed a Dwarven Forge Kickstarter before, the cheap prices of this campaign might just blow your mind. But of course, that is not all. We need to fill those caves up with some monsters. So we have add-on sets, like this one from the previous campaign. Remember that these minis will require some assembly and they come unpainted. Some of them have a few base model monsters that you can mix and match with different props and weapons to make them unique. Starting off with the $39 Silk and Steel collection of goblins and spiders with three boss monsters on large size bases, 16 minis total. The Demon's Domain of Skeletons and Imps has 21 medium minis and one large size boss, again, 39 bucks. The Malevolent Menagerie of Evil Eyes and Abominations has 24 mediums and one large also for 39 bucks. You can also add on a single sub theme unpainted for 49 bucks, painted for 69. There's also legacy sets available pre-painted now. For example, last year they had this set themed after the Abomination Vaults for Pathfinder, and now you can get it pre-painted. Honestly, there's not really anything that's super Pathfinder specific about this one, so you can use it for whatever adventure that you like. But of course, this set used to be unpainted. So here's a frame of the painted Abomination Vault set to give you an idea of what to expect. Another legacy set was the Dwarven Mine, and we were able to get our hands on six frames of the pre-painted version of it. It is a great set that looks like an old abandoned mine that was very likely taken over by Cobalts. They also have a new Caves RPG hardcover supplement and lots of minis from their previous campaign, Deus Slayer, that we previewed in a video that you can watch up there in the corner right now. As always, there will be a slew of stretch goal minis unlocked over the course of the campaign, and they give you quite a lot of really cool minis and terrains and props, just all sorts 
sorts of stuff. Go check out the campaign page now to see what's been unlocked so far. And one of the best things about Dungeons and Lasers is their track record of early delivery. Remember that campaigns like this aren't a store. You are funding the development and manufacturing of these products. Check out the campaign page for the estimated delivery date of the various sets. But legacy sets are going to be available sooner than the new sets, so you can optionally split your shipment into two to get things as soon as possible. You also need to check out those shipping costs over on the main page because you're going to pay shipping later. Now, the usual caveats apply to Kickstarters and GameFound campaigns like this. There's always a bit of risk involved, though I think very little with a company as established as Dungeons and & Lasers and with their track record. But always go read through the campaign yourself to decide if it's right for you. I do have some early samples here that you saw in the video. If you have any questions about them, let me know down below. I'll do my best to answer, but I'm sure Dungeons & Lasers will be monitoring the comments here as well if you have some specific questions. Use our links to visit the campaign page to learn more about it. And you can find me and all our other reviews of Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder minis and terrain and adventures and more over at The Gallant Goblin on YouTube. And until next time, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I will see you next time at The Gallant Goblin.